All right, this is the fourth block of the seventh topic. For this lesson, you're going to need your protractor. So if you need to pause this video and go grab that, feel free to do so. In this lesson, we're going to be exploring and applying the relationship between what are called the interior and the exterior angles of a triangle. So you might guess that interior and exterior have to do something with inside and outside, and you would be correct in doing so. So let's look at the formal definition of what an exterior angle is. It is not just simply an angle outside of a triangle. It is an angle of a triangle that you form by extending a side of a triangle. So it always has to um, be an extension of one of the sides of the triangle. So that's very important. So on number two, I want you on your notes to draw a triangle and then use the definition of an exterior angle to draw an exterior angle. So you can use your straight edge of your protractor to just draw any triangle. It doesn't matter what type of triangle you make. So I have drawn a triangle. So if I want to draw a, um, an exterior angle, then I need to extend one of those sides. So for example, I could just simply extend this side of the triangle out here. This is an exterior angle. It is an extension of one of the sides. So number three says, how many exterior angles will one triangle have? Well, I just made one right there, but I could have extended this side on the other side of the triangle as well. And there's a second exterior angle. I could have extended this side instead of the bottom side, and I could have done so on either side of the triangle. So here's a third exterior angle and a fourth one right here. I could have extended this side on either side of the triangle. And so by doing so, I formed a fifth and a sixth exterior angle. So those are the only three sides to extend. So obviously I'm done making exterior angles. So I made a total of six exterior angles for that triangle. There are two at each vertex. Now this angle right here, is not an exterior angle. It is not formed by an extension of one of the sides. It took both of these extensions to make that angle. So don't get confused. Just because it's outside the triangle doesn't make it an ex exterior angle. It has to be an extension of one of the sides. All right, so let's look at answering question four in your notes. So if we look at this figure that is given to us on number four, we have triangle EDF with an extension of one of the sides forming an exterior angle. So what type of angle is angle EFG? EFG is this angle right here. It's the angle formed by the extension of the side. So we just learned that that is called an exterior angle. So 4A would be an exterior angle. Now, this triangle has three angles that are inside the triangle that are called interior angles. But angles D and E, these two angles here, have a special name as well. So angle D and E, which is part B of number four, they are called remote interior angles. Remote, you might think of your remote control of your TV, which allows you to control your TV from a distance. So that's what remote means, at a distance. And so they're interior, they're inside angles, but they're far away from my exterior angle. So angle EFD is not a remote interior angle because it's right next to my exterior angle. The two that are far away from it are called the remote interior angles. Now, angle EFD, since it's right next to my exterior, we have a name for that. When they share a side, do you remember the name? They're called adjacent angles. So angle EFD, this one right here, is an adjacent interior angle. So do you see the difference between remote and adjacent interior angles? Adjacent is the one right next door to the um, exterior angle, 
and the remote interior angles are the two angles that are far away from it. So what I want you to do on number five in class, we will um, look at um, different things. Uh, before I go that, let's answer this question. As a review, how is the exterior angle related to its adjacent interior angle? Now, you might say linear pair, and you're correct. They're a linear pair because they're two angles that make a line together, but that's not what I mean by how are they related. The relationship is that they're supplementary. Remember, we know that by the linear pair theorem. So the exterior angle and its adjacent interior angles have to be supplementary to each other because they're a linear pair. Now let's move on to question five. So on, in the class, we're going to look at different types of triangles, but you shouldn't have to do every single type of triangle. So all I want you to do on number five is to draw a triangle using the straight edge of your protractor. And you can see I just drew a random triangle. All three sides appear to be different, so it looks to be a scaling triangle. And all of my angles appear to be less than 90 degrees, so it looks like it's a scaling acute angle, um, triangle. You can make any type of triangle. You can make a right one, an acute one, an obtuse one. It does not matter. But I do want you to have one exterior angle drawn. And so you need to extend out one side like I did here. And then I want you to use your protractor, and I want you to measure these four angles. The exterior angle, its adjacent interior angle, and both remote interior angles. So measure, um, draw your triangle, measure those, and then you can start the video back up. Okay, so I'm going to go through the process of measuring mine um, just to show you some extra practice using your protractor. So when measuring my exterior angle, remember this little line at the bottom of my protractor goes at the vertex of that angle. And then I'll line up the bottom of my protractor along the side of that angle like is done right here. I'm trying to see where this line crosses here and it crosses between 100 and 110 and 80 and 70. But clearly my exterior angle that I drew is an obtuse angle. So it wouldn't make sense for me to say it's 75 degrees. It's obviously the one that's halfway between 100 and 110, which in this case is 105 degrees. Now, to measure its adjacent interior, I don't even need to move my protractor. I'm at the vertex of that angle, and I'm lined up along this side, but this time I'm wanting the acute measurement. So I'm wanting the one that is between 70 and 80, which is 75 degrees. Now I'm going to measure this remote interior angle by moving my dash over here to this vertex, still lined up along the bottom of my protractor, and I'm looking to see where that crosses here. And again, that is an acute angle, so I obviously wouldn't give the one between 120 and 130. I'm looking at halfway between 60 and 50 is where mine is crossing here, which would be 55 degrees. To measure my last angle, I might find it helpful to move my paper around, line up my dash with the vertex of that angle, line up along the side here of my protractor going through zero, and it looks like this angle is going halfway between the 50 and 60 here. Uh, well, it's not. Where am I? I need to line up here better, don't I? It looks like we're going straight at 50 on this angle. So my second remote angle looks like it is exactly 50 degrees. Okay, so what we're trying to see is, is there a relationship between the exterior angle and the two remote interior angles? So I can see one with mine, see if the same thing holds true with yours. What appears to be true with my measurements is that the two remote interior angles add up to be my exterior angles measure. 55 plus 50 is 105. Is that what worked with yours as well? Now let's look at answering number six in our notes here. It says the exterior angle conjecture, remember we haven't proved it yet. When we prove it, it'll become a theorem states that the measure of the exterior angle of the triangle is what the what of the measures of the remote interior angles. Well, hopefully you found the same thing that I did, and that's that the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to, that would go to your first blank here, equal to 
the what of those remote interior angles? Well, it's the sum. You had to add them. So my 50 plus 55 equaled my exterior angle, which was 105. It's a conjecture until we prove it. We're going to prove it here in just a moment on number 7. But it states that the measure of an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. Not the adjacent one, the two that are remote. All right, so question seven, we're actually going to prove that conjecture. And so that is going to become a theorem at that point. So I'll go to my notes, might make it a little bit easier for you to see here. So in this proof, it asks us, first of all, the measure of angle EFG, EFG is my exterior angle, plus EFG, EFG is the adjacent interior angle, and remember, we already talked about those are a linear pair, so they have the relationship of being supplementary. So I know these two have to add up to be 180 degrees. So that would go in my first blank here, 180 degrees. And the reason for that is because the angles form a what together? They form a straight line. Now, the next part, the next sentence, says the measure of angle E, which is this angle up here, plus the measure of angle D, which is this one here, plus EFD, which is this angle here. Those are the three angles of the triangle. So what do three angles of a triangle have to add up to equal? Well, we've already learned that. They have to equal 180 degrees as well. And the reason why we know that is because of the triangle sum theorem. So since both of these expressions are set equal to the same thing, they both equal 180 degrees, we know that we can set them equal to each other. What allows me to do that? Substitution property. So by the substitution property, I can set the measure of angle EFG plus the measure of angle EFD equal to the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle EFD. So since they both equal to 180, they equal each other. So now all we have to do is use the subtraction property of equality. So what do both sides have that we can subtract away? They both have the measure of angle EFD. So when we subtract those away, what do we have remaining? We have the measure of angle EFG, which is my exterior angle, equal to the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle D, which are my two remote interior angles. So we have proved what's called the exterior angle theorem. All right, so our wrap up today, can an exterior angle ever be acute? Yes, all it have to do to be acute is just to simply start with an obtuse um, triangle, like I'm showing on my notes, and extend this side. So that makes an acute exterior angle. Can it be right? Yes, it just needs to be adjacent to a right angle. If you extend this side, now that exterior angle is a right angle. Can it be obtuse? Yes, that's what we looked at in number seven. The exterior angle is obtuse. So the exterior angle can be any of those um, types of angles, acute, right, or obtuse.